Hello guys, this is your virtual field trip for our solar system. So we're going to start at the beginning of our solar system and work our way all the way through it. As you go through this, take notes on your little note sheet that you're going to use to go with this. You'll have notes and definitions to complete as you go through this. So let us begin. So we're going to start with Mercury, which is the closest planet to our sun, and we're going to work our way all the way through Neptune, which is the last planet of our solar system. So first we're going to visit the terrestrial planets. These are the planets that are closest to the sun. These planets are smaller in size. They have little to no moons. They have a solid rocky surface. They are made mostly of heavy metals such as iron and nickel. And they have shorter periods of revolution. So again, revolutions, this is talking about it takes less time to go around the sun. So each planet's calendar year would be the smallest out of the planets in our solar system. All right, so welcome to Mercury. This planet is closest to the sun. It is the smallest planet in our solar system. Mercury has a drastic, drastically different temperatures during the day and night because it lacks a dense atmosphere to hold in heat. It also has a very slow rotational rate, meaning its days are going to be longer. A year on Mercury is 88 days. Yet a day on Mercury is 176 Earth days. Mercury has more impact craters and impact marks than any other planet, which makes sense since it's closer to our sun, which draws everything toward it due to its immense size and gravity. The planet Mercury is named after the messenger of the Roman gods because even the ancients could see how swift and fleeting it is in the sky. But it wasn't until recently that scientists began unraveling Mercury's many mysteries. Mercury is the smallest planet in our solar system. Its diameter currently measures just over 3,000 miles, about the size of the continental United States. Like Earth, Mercury is a terrestrial planet with three main layers, a core, a mantle, and a crust. Only Mercury's crust has no tectonic plates. Also, its iron core is enormous by comparison, making up 85% of its radius, while Earth's inner and outer core account for just 55%. Because of the core's exceptional size, it's had a surprising influence on Mercury's overall size by causing it to shrink. The hot iron core has slowly cooled and contracted over the planet's 4.5 billion years. In doing so, it pulled Mercury's surface inward and has caused the planet to shrink radially by more than four miles. This shrinking planet is also the planet closest to the sun, orbiting our solar system star at an average distance of roughly 36 million miles. Such proximity affects Mercury's atmosphere, or rather, the lack of one. It only has a very thin exosphere, which is traditionally the outermost layer of a planet's atmosphere. This exosphere is made of oxygen, sodium, hydrogen, helium, and potassium, all whipped up from the planet's surface by solar winds. The lack of atmosphere and close proximity to the sun also makes Mercury a planet of extremes. The surface temperature can climb to 800 degrees Fahrenheit during the daytime and fall to 290 degrees below zero at night. Mercury's proximity to the sun is also the reason behind its age-old reputation of being swift and fleeting. The sun's gravity pulls harder on Mercury than any other planet. And like all planets, Mercury travels in an elliptical orbit, slowing down when it's farther away from the sun and accelerating as it draws closer. Clocking in at an average speed of over 100,000 miles per hour, Mercury slings around the sun in just 88 days. From Earth, Mercury is difficult to observe because it's fleeting and so close to the sun. And so far, it's only been visited by two spacecraft, NASA's Mariner 10, and Messenger. Those missions gave us much of what we know today, 
but future ventures are in the works with high hopes of revealing more of Mercury's secrets. Welcome to Venus. This is the second stop on our trip. This planet is the second planet from the sun in our solar system. It has nearly the same diameter, density, and surface gravity as Earth, but not quite Earth, as you'll see in a moment. Rocks here compose, are composed of similar materials as that on Earth and are both geographically active. So, meaning there's active volcanoes. Venus has a much denser atmosphere with higher pressure and a much higher surface temperature than Earth. This is why sometimes re is referred to as Earth's sister planet. Venus is the third brightest object in the Earth's sky after the sun and the moon. Venus is also the hottest planet in our solar system with an average temperature of 462 degrees Celsius or 863 degrees Fahrenheit. So, wouldn't be a great place for us to live. sky. But behind this facade is a world of storms and infernos unlike anywhere else in the solar system. Venus, the second planet from the sun, is very similar to Earth from a distance, but up close it's a very different world. Venus is about the same size as Earth, just slightly smaller. Its structure is also nearly identical with an iron core, a hot mantle, and a rocky crust. The crust of Venus, however, is dotted with thousands of volcanoes, including Maxwell Montes, a volcano almost as tall as Mount Everest. Venus also has a thick, layered atmosphere. It's full of clouds that rain sulfuric acid and whip around the planet at speeds up to 224 miles per hour, faster than some Category 5 hurricanes. The atmosphere is so thick that it creates a surface pressure similar to what it would be about half a mile deep in the Earth's oceans. This pressure is heavy enough that a human standing on Venus's surface would be crushed. 
The atmosphere is made of greenhouse gases, primarily carbon dioxide, which create an extreme case of global warming. They trap the sun's heat, causing surface temperatures to rise over 880 degrees Fahrenheit, making Venus the hottest planet in the solar system. Venus is so inhospitable, neither humans nor spacecraft are able to survive the planet's surface. But some scientists speculate that Venus wasn't always so unwelcoming. From roughly 2.9 billion to 715 million years ago, global temperatures on Venus may have been just a few degrees cooler than Earth's are today. And scientists theorize that the surface may have contained shallow oceans that could have held enough water to support life. Today, life may still exist in Venus's atmosphere. About 30 miles up in Venus's clouds, where the temperature and surface pressure are similar to those on the surface of Earth, scientists have observed strange dark streaks that appear to be absorbing ultraviolet radiation, a phenomenon that could be evidence of microbial life. Life may struggle to survive in the atmosphere of Venus, but it is this unforgiving environment that's made Venus an icon of beauty. It reflects 70% of all the sunlight that reaches the planet, which is why Venus shines more brightly than any other planet or star in the night sky. While more than 40 unmanned spacecraft have visited this infernal world, Venus, so illuminated in the darkness of space, still has much to reveal. All right, welcome to Earth. This is the planet you guys are probably going to be most familiar with. This is the third planet from our sun, and it is the largest of the terrestrial planets. The ozone layer is what the Earth has to protect it from the harmful solar radiation put off by the sun. This shell is a special type of oxygen, as you'll see in chemistry, that absorbs most of the sun's powerful UV rays. Without the ozone, we would get sunburned super fast. So, 70% of the Earth's surface is covered with water. The remainder consists of continents and islands, which together have many lakes and other sources of water. So, the Earth's distance from the sun, the presence of surface liquid water, moderate surface temperature, and free oxygen in the atmosphere are the aspects that make Earth habitable for life. So, this would be a great item for you to take note of. Why Earth is the planet of choice for humans. And as we look for other planets to inhabit over the course of time, this is what we must factor in or come up with a way to create. Earth, the only planet known to maintain life, a product of scientific phenomena and sheer chance. This blue speck in space holds the past, present, and future of our very existence. Approximately 4.5 billion years ago, the Earth formed from particles left over from the creation of our Sun. Gravity drew these particles together to form pebbles, which then formed boulders and eventually the Earth. At its heart is a solid inner core covered by a liquid outer core. Above this sits the mantle made of flowing silicate rocks and a rocky crust. This rocky mass is the third planet from the sun, orbiting the star from an average distance of about 93 million miles. It's close enough to the sun to be warm, unlike the cold gas giants, but not so close that its surface is exposed to extreme heat and solar radiation, as is the case with Mercury. Earth's unique position in the solar system allows it to house phenomena yet to be found anywhere else in the universe, particularly liquid surface water and life. According to one theory, much of Earth's water is as old as its rocks, 
both of which having formed during the Earth's earliest days. Because of Earth's unique distance from the Sun, the planet is able to contain water in all of its forms, liquid, ice, and gas, rather than have them permanently frozen or evaporated into space. But Earth is the only known place in the universe with liquid water on the surface, thereby having unique cascading effects on the planet. It hydrates the land, helping create nutrient-rich soil. It collects and pools to form oceans and freshwater systems. And it cycles upward to add moisture to Earth's protective atmosphere. And where there is liquid water, there is life. About 3.8 billion years ago in Earth's oceans, primitive life existed in the form of microbial organisms. They, and the ensuing billions of years, gave rise to a range of more advanced life forms that thrived in Earth's seas, lands, and skies. As the only world known to harbor life, Earth's biodiversity is expansive in nature. An estimated 1.5 million species of plants, animals, bacteria, fungi, and others have been cataloged with potentially millions, if not billions more, yet to be discovered. Home to life and fueled by water, Earth houses a unique global ecosystem as curious and as grand as the astronomical events that made them possible. Welcome to the fourth planet in our journey. So this is Mars. It is the fourth planet from the sun and the last of the terrestrial planets. So Mars is often referred to as the red planet because of the brownish red color of its surface. Mars is the second smallest planet in our solar system just behind Mercury. But Mars is a little different. Mars has seasons like Earth, but they last twice as long. Mars has two moons listed here. Mars's volcanoes became so tall that Mars lacks a top, sorry, lacks a moving tectonic plates. So volcanoes remain above the magma source for a very long time. To the ancient Romans, the planet Mars was symbolic of blood and war. But to many people today, the red planet may hold the key for a bright new future for humanity. The story of Mars began about 4.5 billion years ago when gas and dust swirled together to form the fourth planet from the sun. Mars is the second smallest planet in the solar system with a diameter just shy of the width of Africa. In fact, its entire surface area is similar to that of all of Earth's continents combined. Much like its terrestrial cousin, Mars is dense and has a rocky composition. At the center of the planet is a core made of iron, nickel, and sulfur, which may have created a protective magnetic field during Mars's earlier years. Enveloping the core is a rocky mantle made of silicate minerals and a crust rich in iron. These iron minerals react with the trace amounts of oxygen in Mars's atmosphere and rusts, giving the planet its signature reddish hue. While its blood-like appearance inspired the ancient Romans to name Mars after their god of war, the planet's rusty color could be considered symbolic of the planet's prime days long past. Today, Mars is dry, desolate, and cold, with temperatures dropping as low as negative 225 degrees Fahrenheit. But billions of years ago, the planet was much warmer, more geologically active, and had a watery surface. 
Lake beds and river valleys snake along the face of Mars, indicating that liquid water was, for a time, present. Volcanoes, such as Olympus Mons, the largest volcano in the solar system at three times the height of Mount Everest, once erupted lava. But by about 50 million years ago, soon after Earth's dinosaurs died out, Mars's volcanoes also went extinct. Water on the red planet still exists today, but mostly in the form of polar ice caps. Because of factors such as the presence of water, some scientists believe life may have existed on the red planet and may exist again. Since the 1960s, space programs from around the world have launched missions to Mars in attempts to understand the planet's past, present, and potential for sustaining life. Life on another planet may well be out of reach for the near future. But if any planet can give us hope, Mars may hold the key to the survival of humanity. So we're done with the terrestrial planets. Now we're going to move on to the Joven planets. So these are the planets that are furthest from the sun. They are larger in size. They have many moons. They are often gaseous and less dense. They have longer periods of revolution. And these planets have ring systems, which as you can see are quite beautiful. All right, welcome to Jupiter. This is the first of our Joven planets. So Jupiter is the largest and the most massive planet in our solar system, next to the sun though. The sun is still larger. It would take 11 Earths lined up next to each other to stretch from one side of Jupiter to the other. So that would be its equatorial diameter. So it's quite a bit. Jupiter consists mainly of helium and hydrogen gases and has a very high internal temperature. Jupiter also has a great red spot, which is a giant rotating storm similar to a hurricane that we would have on Earth. However, the giant red, the great red spot is twice the diameter of Earth and has wind speeds up to 336 miles per hour. Another key difference here, this, as a Joven planet, it has many moons. So Jupiter has at least 67 moons in satellite around the planet. So in satellite just means orbiting the planet. Jupiter rotates very quickly, turning on its axis once every nine hours and 55 minutes. This gives Jupiter the shortest day of, eight of the eight planets in our solar system. Born from primordial stardust 4.5 billion years ago, Jupiter was the solar system's first planet. And much like its namesake, the king of the ancient Roman gods, Jupiter was destined for greatness. Jupiter is the fifth planet from the sun and the largest planet in the solar system. At approximately 11 Earths wide, Jupiter has twice the amount of mass as the other planets put together. But unlike Earth and the three other terrestrial worlds, Jupiter has no solid surface. It may not even have a traditionally solid core. Rather, this giant planet may have a dense liquid center surrounded by a worldwide ocean of hydrogen and helium gases. Jupiter's gaseous composition can be observed in its atmosphere. About 44 miles thick, the atmosphere is a canvas of stripes and storms churning across the giant planet. Their colors range between shades of whites, yellows, browns, and reds, all caused by the different chemical makeup of each area. Probably the most iconic feature of Jupiter is a crimson-brown storm that's been raging for over 300 years, the Great Red Spot. It's a giant, swirling collection of clouds with wind speeds of up to 400 miles per hour, 
at least two and a half times faster than Category 5 hurricanes. Floating hundreds of miles above the storms of Jupiter are about 79 moons, the most of the eight known planets. The four largest moons were discovered by Galileo in 1610. Called the Galilean satellites, they include Io, the most volcanically active celestial body in the solar system, Ganymede, the solar system's largest moon, even larger than the planet Mercury, and Callisto and Europa, which, along with Ganymede, may contain oceans of liquid water underneath their crusts. Jupiter's large collection of moons is only made possible by the planet's massive size and gravitational pull, the strongest of all the planets in the solar system. This incredible gravity also influenced the sizes of the seven other planets. During the solar system's earliest days, Jupiter, being the first planet to form, attracted and destroyed space debris that would have helped the other planets grow in size. Today, that force may serve as a shield by attracting comets and asteroids onto Jupiter's own surface, preventing them from crashing onto inner planets like Earth. Apart from the Sun, Jupiter has become the dominant figure in the solar system, thereby earning its place at the top of the planetary heap as king. Welcome to Saturn. This is the sixth planet. We're getting close to the end of our journey. This is the second largest planet in our solar system in terms of size and mass. Sorry, in, ter ter in terms of diameter and mass. Saturn is also, re also re often re referred to as the ring planet due to the large, beautiful, and extensive ring system that encircles the planet. These rings are made mostly from chunks of ice and carbonaceous dust. Jupiter has the fastest wind speed of any planet other planet in our solar system. Winds here have been measured at 1100 miles per hour, so quite fast. Saturn is the least dense planet in our solar system. It is made mostly of hydrogen, which is the lightest element, and has a density which is less than water, which technically means that Saturn would float in a gigantic bathtub. Because again, if something is less dense than water, it will float. If it's more dense, it will sink. Saturn has 150 moons with smaller moonlets. The interior surface of Saturn is very hot, reaching temperatures up to 11,000 degrees Celsius or 21,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So, a little warm. With its gold color and stunning rings, Saturn is quite a planetary gem. Saturn is the second largest of the eight planets and it is about 10 times as wide as Earth. Despite its size, Saturn is actually the lightest planet. It is predominantly made of the gases hydrogen and helium, and because of its particular gaseous composition, Saturn is the only planet in the solar system that's less dense than water. If the planet were placed on an enormous ocean, it would be able to float. Saturn's gaseous makeup also means that it has no true surface. At its center, the planet has a dense core of water, ice, and rocky material, but it has no actual landmass. Instead, it's mostly made of gases, liquids, and yellow ammonia crystals that swirl around the planet, creating golden clouds and storms. The largest storm on Saturn is at its North Pole. It's over twice the size of Earth and shaped in a near-perfect hexagon. Each of the six sides is believed to be the result of jet streams, which all encircle a massive hurricane. Because of Saturn's inhospitable environment, the planet cannot support life, but some of its moons might. Saturn has more than 50 confirmed moons, and each varies in size and terrain. Enceladus, one of Saturn's smallest moons, is covered in ice and only about as wide as the state of Pennsylvania. 
Titan, Saturn's largest moon, is nearly as wide as Canada. Titan is also the only moon in the solar system with clouds and a dense atmosphere. Both Titan and Enceladus have underground oceans that would make them potentially capable of sustaining life. Saturn's moons may also play a role in shaping the planet's signature feature, its rings. Saturn's ring system is the largest and most complex in the entire solar system. The rings are made of icy and rocky remnants from comets, asteroids, and moons. The particles range in size from being as small as dust to as big as mountains. The ring system is divided into seven groups of rings. Altogether, they are as wide as four and a half Earths, but only about two-thirds of a mile thick. How the rings are able to stay on track and intact has to do with Saturn's smallest moons. Called shepherding moons, these tiny satellites orbit between the rings and they seem to use their gravity to shape the ring material into circular paths. Saturn has fascinated scientists and amateur astronomers alike for thousands of years. The ancient Greeks and Romans, who named the planet after the god of agriculture, believed it was a star. It wasn't until the 17th century, after the telescope was invented, that scientists like Galileo Galilei, Christian Huygens, and Giovanni Cassini could take a much closer look. Only then was Saturn's planetary status discovered, and ultimately, its many moons and brilliant rings. Because of its planet-like moons, lightweight composition, and dazzling ring system, Saturn continues to mesmerize us to this day. We are now reached Uranus. This is the seventh planet in our little trip. So like Venus, Uranus rotates in a retrograde direction, which means it's the opposite direction than that of the Earth. So then this is talking about rotation, not revolutions. So Uranus's wind speeds can reach up to 560 miles an hour. Uranus is also often referred to as an ice giant. While it does have hydrogen and helium in its upper layer like the other gas planet, Uranus also has an icy mantle which is surrounded, which surrounds its rock and iron core. So this is a key difference here. This planet has a rock and iron core. It is not just a gaseous planet. So it also has 13 known rings and is the coldest planet in our solar system. The minimum surface temperature of Uranus is negative 224 degrees Celsius. If you convert that to Fahrenheit, you'll find it is quite, quite cold. In ancient times, humans studied the night sky and discovered the worlds of Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. But beyond this realm of knowledge, another world shined brightly, just waiting to be discovered. Uranus is the seventh planet from the Sun. From a distance of about 20 astronomical units, or 20 times the distance between Earth and the Sun, Uranus orbits the star once every 84 Earth years, approximately the length of a human's entire life. This orbit causes each season of Uranus to last that much longer. Theoretically, a human living on Uranus would experience the four seasons only once but each for about 21 years. Partially due to its distance from the sun, Uranus boasts the coldest temperatures in the solar system. These icy temperatures, dropping as low as negative 370 degrees Fahrenheit, are largely influenced by the planet's composition. At about four Earths wide, Uranus has an Earth-sized core made of iron and magnesium silicate. The remainder, 
approximately 80% of Uranus, is a worldwide ocean of ices made of water, ammonia, and methane, the chemical behind the planet's cool blue color. This icy composition prevents Uranus from emitting much heat compared to other planets, making the blue world the solar system's coldest. In addition to its extreme temperatures and orbit, Uranus has a dramatic orientation. While the other seven planets spin on their axes like tops, Uranus appears to roll along its equator. The planet is tilted at a near right angle in which polar regions point toward and away from the sun rather than upward and downward. This tilt, thought to be the result of Uranus's collision with at least one celestial body, has also affected the orientation of Uranus's 13 rings and 27 known moons. Unlike the rings and moons of other worlds, which orbit their home planets horizontally, those of Uranus orbit in a vertical orientation along the planet's tilted equator, much like a Ferris wheel. Uranus and its many unusual features were a mystery to the ancients, and the planet was actually thought to be a star. But in the late 18th century, astronomer William Herschel discovered that the celestial object was actually a new world. The scientific community debated over what the planet should be called and eventually chose a name suggested by astronomer Johann Alert Bode. Bode believed that since Jupiter was the father of the gods and Saturn was the father of Jupiter, then this new planet should be the father of Saturn, Silus. But rather than following the tradition of using names from ancient Roman religion, Bode instead opted for Silus's ancient Greek equivalent, Uranos. Uranos, the ancient Greek god of the heavens, was then Latinized to be Uranus. To this day, Uranus is still the only planet that veered from tradition with an ancient Greek namesake, a status most fitting for a planet beyond convention. And the final stop on our journey is Neptune. This is the eighth planet away from the sun. So on June the 11th, 2011, Neptune completed its first full orbit since its discovery in 1846. So this brings light to the fact the further planets are away from the sun, the slower they revolve around the sun. So the farther they are away, the longer each planet's year would be. So, Neptune has a storm similar to the Great Red Spot on Jupiter. It is commonly known as the Great Dark Spot and is roughly the size of the Earth. Neptune has 14 known moons. The largest of these moons is known as Titan, which is a frozen world which, split, which spits out particles of nitrogen, ice, and dust from below its surface. Neptune has an average surface temperature of negative 214 degrees Celsius, which would convert to about negative 353 degrees Fahrenheit. Along the dark edges of the solar system, it floats. Anchored by a star, but barely graced by its warmth, this traveler drifts alone, as deceptively calm and elusive as the deep blue sea. Neptune is the eighth planet from the sun. At about 30 times the distance between our star and the Earth, or 30 astronomical units, Neptune is the most distant planet in our solar system. This distance creates the longest orbit of the eight worlds, about 165 years, with the seasons lasting a little over 40 Earth years each. Being so far away from the heat and light of the Sun, Neptune is cold, dark, and icy. At its heart is a solid core about one and a half times the size of Earth. Making up about 45% of the planet's mass, the core is made of water ice and silicate rock, 
The rest of the planet is believed to be a hot, pressurized ocean of water, methane, and ammonia ices surrounded by a layer of clouds. These clouds, predominantly made of hydrogen and helium, include traces of methane, which give this ocean world its rich blue color. While the clouds create a cool, calm veneer from afar, up close, they are whipped around by the most severe weather in the solar system. Winds on the planet reach speeds of over 1,200 miles per hour, nearly five times faster than the strongest winds recorded on Earth. In fact, the winds are so powerful that they break the sound barrier. Drifting high above this windy ice giant is a quiet ecosystem of rings and satellites. Six rings encircle the planet, with some containing ring arcs, or clusters of dust particles in a ring. Also revolving around the planet are 14 known moons, with the largest called Triton. Named after the son of the ancient Greek sea god, Triton has ice volcanoes and may even contain a subsurface ocean. Much is left to be discovered about Neptune, its rings, and its moons. Only one spacecraft, Voyager 2, has visited these cosmic bodies, but future missions to this mysterious, icy world would have even more stories to tell. guys on this pause the video when you get to the end of this when i get through talking here um after your notes you will go ahead and take some time and define these vocabulary words some of them were defined earlier so you can just pull your notes down but you need to make a list one two three four five six seven eight nine words At, after your notes define each of these and once you guys are done, turn in your notes and definitions. This can all be on one or two sheets of paper. If you need to staple it, do so. And you will need to turn this into the tray in class. Make sure your name is on it. I hope you guys have enjoyed your virtual field trip.